On April 11, 1970, Apollo 13 launched on the third planned lunar landing mission. Coverage of the launch brought a unique feature to television viewers. A close-up view of the launch live using a color television camera developed to travel to the moon. Stan Labar was the Westinghouse project director for the lunar television camera. The networks wanted to do something very much different than they had ever done, so they asked us. They couldn't take a color camera and put it up, color television camera, and do a live shot from the LUT, which is the uh, thing that structure that surrounds the Saturn V. It sits there. So they asked us to, to, can we take a camera up to the very high point, which was above the, the looking down on the spacecraft. Color television cameras in 1970 were large, unwieldy, fragile devices. But the Westinghouse lunar television camera was compact and designed to be used in a hostile environment. Labar agreed to use their engineering camera to provide live color television of Apollo 13's launch. The question was, how do we, how do we have a camera that's so close to the, these engines without disintegrating the camera? So they said that they would build us a metal box and they would put a blade of coating over them. And on the front, uh, where the, the camera lens would be sitting inside, they would have a, a quartz, a big quartz window, uh, window about eight inches long and about five or six inches in diameter. And in front of the uh, quartz window, they would have two jets of nitrogen, 700 pound in each jet, 700 pound of nitrogen going across the, uh, the uh, quartz window. And they said, we believe that this would, would survive. I said, That's, I appreciate that. The three networks had agreed to pay for this thing. They all paid for it except CBS refused. ABC and NBC did. So they held this plug out they weren't going to plug CBS into the thing. It had a tag on it in the pool until they coughed up whatever amount of money it was supposed to. So we're in the pool, and suddenly, and of course the, the, the normal televisions are five miles away, and this television camera is within a couple of hundred feet. And the image we were getting was, was beautiful. It just happened just uh, about... 40 minutes before a cloud came down and just came right on down and it became fog. And so the cameras five miles away had nothing. You get, if you're looking through fog at five miles, you're not going to see anything. And they didn't. It just disappeared. And the only image they had was this bright thing sitting there, bright color image of this thing. And meanwhile, CBS starts to call in and wants them to plug in because they're getting just blank. And the, the producer at ABC said, now nah, let him call for a while. And so he's calling. Meanwhile, he tells the guy, plug it in. So he finally picks up the phone. He says, well, if you look on, you got your feed. And so they all, that was the only feed they had at that point in time. And then miraculously, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes before or so of the flight, the, the, the fog and cloud lifted and they were able to get their imagery. When the actual uh, launch took place, the first thing that we could see was these red things coming out and bursting out of the bottom of the, uh, of the Saturn V. And it started to lift and the camera just stayed on and it got as high as uh, just about to where the engines were when it just died. Labar was certain that the camera the only model on hand for testing, had just been destroyed. He was able to return to the pad around four hours after launch. When we got there, the, the two the wires were hanging out of the box and it had been a, a cut, just like somebody cut it with a knife. So it became apparent for us that we didn't possibly lose the camera. This Something came over and cut this wire. And things like that happened up there. While we were standing there looking at the thing, right up against the uh, bottom of the railing was an L-beam about two feet long, a quarter inch L-beam that had been come off something and had flown and came in at such a tremendous force and landed down at the base of, uh, of the 
railing, and there was a metal plate up there, and it landed against that metal plate. And we looked at that and said, you know, if that metal plate hadn't been there, it would have gone right through into that spacecraft, to the Saturn V, and it would have blown one heck of a big hole. And whatever problems they would have had later on, they would have never gotten to it. And it would have been a, an awful disaster. And if it wasn't for that plate sitting there, because this thing had to be moving at a tremendous force, and only had to go a short way to into the thing. We brought the camera back to uh, the, uh, the pool, and we turned it back on. We hooked it up a new cable to it, and everything worked fine. So the camera did survive. It was the only time it was ever done. Uh, it was that one time. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit and we have booked off at 2.13. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust and it has cleared the tower.